Certainly one of the most timeless classics to come out of the Gospels and the Bible in general is the story, the parable of the prodigal son. And like most stories in the Bible, we only read about it in one book of the Bible. Of the four Gospels, only the Gospel of Luke tells this story. And I'm sure we've heard a number of interpretations about it. First of all, the, what the prodigal son means in terms of the, first son, the younger son who ran away and came back. There's also the issue of the other son, the older son, which is really the second half of the story. The story doesn't end when the son comes back. That's the midpoint. But the second half is about the other son who objects, just as the Pharisees objected to Jesus' fellowship with sinners at the beginning of today's Gospel reading. Some have gone so far as to offer reflections on the prodigal father. Some even saying, well, the older son should be upset because the father favored the wayward son. But I've often been surprised in this modern, politically correct, woke, conscious society that there's another individual that has never been brought up in this story of the prodigal son. Almost akin to the story of the woman caught in adultery and the people gathering to stone her, sometimes there are people who ask, well, where's the man involved in this? The focus is on the woman caught in adultery. In today's gospel, we have the prodigal son, we have the son who stayed, we have the father, who's the very compassionate and forgiving father. But I've never heard anyone ask, where's the mother in this dynamic? Where's the prodigal mother? Isn't there a mother in this entire story? Obviously, the father fathered these children with the mother. And in many ways, it would make sense to reflect upon what would the role of the mother be, because it would coincide very well with the parable of the lost coin that we also hear in today's gospel, and not because the main character of that parable is also a woman, but because she engages in an activity that the shepherd in the first parable also engages in, which the father in the longer, more well-known parable does not. What does the shepherd do? The shepherd leaves the 99 and goes and searches for the lost sheep. In the second parable, the woman cleans the house in search of the lost coin. The father, in the parable of the prodigal son, merely stands and waits for his return. And perhaps there is where we might see the key to the prodigal mother, who of course isn't mentioned in the parable, but let's have a little fun using our imagination. As a community of faith and a church throughout the world, who do we refer to as mother? Well, we refer to the Blessed Virgin Mary as mother. But one of the titles that she has is a symbol and model of the church, who we refer to as Holy Mother Church. And it is to this church that Jesus gives his explicit instructions when it comes to seeking the lost sheep, seeking the lost coin. And so perhaps if we were to insert a mother into this dynamic, into this story, the mother would not be waiting with the husband, who symbolizes God the Father, ready to forgive and receive back those wayward sons and daughters who returned to him. The mother would symbolize the church whom Jesus has commissioned to go and actively seek out the lost, which is what the shepherd does and which is what the woman does, respectively for the lost sheep and the lost coin. We are that prodigal mother. We are that church that Jesus calls upon, not just to pray for those who have gone astray, but to actively seek out the lost and bring them back to the Father to experience his unconditional love, welcome, and forgiveness. We are the instruments who seek out and find the lost sheep and the lost coin and the prodigal son. We have many opportunities to do that. We're living in a day and age now in which it is not uncommon for parents to say that some, if not all, of their children don't practice the faith. 
Are the parents continuing to be the parents of those children whose vocation it is to raise another generation to pass on that faith? Or do they just simply surrender to the fact, well, my kids don't practice, what can I do? They can be those prodigal mothers as mothers and fathers to seek out and bring their children back. Very much like St. Monica, who we honor her mainly for nothing else other than bringing her son, St. Augustine, back to the faith. It's another one of those legendary stories of the Church's saints. Her tears and her prayers brought her son back to the faith. And Augustine became one of those prodigal children who came back and is one of our great theologians. How do we know that his mother's tears and prayers brought him back? Because in his confessions, Augustine tells us that her tears and prayers brought him back. How did Augustine know that his mother's tears and prayers brought him back? Probably because she reminded him of it on a regular basis and nagged him to come back. She was quite a feisty woman. He tells the story of her death, and when he asks, would you like to hold on and perhaps be buried back in your home country? And she says, why? I'm going to a better place. It doesn't matter where I'm to be buried. That's in the confession. She was a feisty woman, a feisty mother, and no doubt her feistiness, in addition to her prayers and tears, were instrumental in bringing back her son. How many parents actively do that to their children who have gone astray? We're coming on the heels of a time of isolation, social distancing, and lockdown, and many people still have misgivings of coming back to the church to worship and receive the sacraments. This is a golden opportunity to be those shepherds who seek out the lost sheep, to bring them back, to help them overcome their fear and their reluctance, and hopefully stir up in them a value and a desire for the sacraments, the Eucharist, and the community of faith to come and worship God that supersedes and overshadows the fear that has been grained and driven into us over the last couple of years. There may be other friends we know. I mean, how many people nowadays say, oh, I'm not Catholic, but I was raised Catholic? My answer to that is, well, wasn't everybody? How many people say they were raised Catholic or they're not practicing Catholics? And do we make that effort with the Father standing and waiting for their return to be those prodigal mothers, those women looking for the coin, those shepherds searching for the lost sheep, to actively bring back those who have gone astray? Let us perhaps reflect upon that element of the story of the prodigal son. The Father waited diligently for his son's return. We are called to go out like the shepherd and seek the lost sheep, like the woman and search diligently for the lost coin. Let us be those instruments whereby the church, as the prodigal mother church, seeks out the lost so that those who have gone astray may find their way back to that all-loving, all-embracing, ever-waiting, and all-forgiving Heavenly Father.